Hello, my name is John Pring from Geoscience Australia and I'm here to talk about building future capacity and capability through the use of citizen science with an emphasis on the youth participation. In November 2019, Australia hosted the Group on Earth Observation Geo Week 2019, an international ministerial summit focused on the gathering and use of Earth observations. Prime carriage for organising the event rested with Geoscience Australia. The, this photo was taken at the gala dinner uh, for the event. Please note the three younger folk in the front row. The three of them and what they achieved from the forms the basis of the case study explored in this presentation. I'm guessing that the age gap is a few years, so why involve three youth in an international award ceremony? I'll get to that in a moment, but perhaps a bit of background to start off with. Geoscience Australia is an agency of approximately 650 people. Our mission is to apply geoscience to Australia's most important challenges, and we have a range of scientific, educational and corporate programs to achieve this. This includes mapping of flooding using satellite imagery via Digital Earth Australia, management of Australia's involvement in positioning infrastructure, including a network of ground stations. This network is currently 130 ground stations and will rise to 200. It will support better positioning from phones, but also autonomous vehicles, precision agriculture, emergency management, and in devices like smartphones, down to a plus or minus about three centimetres in mobile coverage areas. Monitoring and mapping of earthquakes, provision of advice on earthquake uh, on quakes and tsunami warnings. Working with states and territories around groundwater. Pictured here, we're looking at salinity. Mapping and other mapping related products across a wide range of topics. Pictured is iron ore deposits. Mapping and documenting of the geological timescales. Analysis of samples in support of research and industry. This is SHRIMP, stands for Sensitive High Resolution Iron Microprobe, basically using zircons for dating. Commonwealth curator of a number of collections, both physical, cores, cuttings, minerals, fossils, and electronic, including the Landsat archives. Bathymetry, including support and definition of maritime boundaries and the search for MH370. Collection and analysis of data in support of extractive industries in the form of pre-competitive data. Here is a seismic analysis. And education. Over 300 school groups came through in 2018. The old saying that something is greater than the sum of its parts certainly applies here. Citizen science can assist and augment more traditional science approaches. As part of this presentation, I'm going to concentrate more on the impact of citizen science involvement on the individuals and their wider community. As part of the youth engagement for Geo Week 2019, a national team-based citizen science competition was run through Scouts Australia. Scouts Australia is a youth-focused organisation of 56,000 youth, male and female, ages 5 to 26 with 15,600 adult supporters. Internationally, there are some 50 million members. The competition called for the capturing of ground cover observations that would support such activities as validation of satellite-based ground cover products. This map of Australia is an example and illustrates the extent of ground cover as at October 2019, just prior to the majority of the large bushfires in Australia that you may have heard about. The competition premise was using the NASA Globe Observer phone-based app and the associated teaming functionality. Participants were to make ground cover observations. Points were awarded based on distance from major towns and cities. The teams needed to be youth-led but could be supported by adults, e.g. parents uh, providing parents and friends providing transport and taking observations tagged to a youth-based team. Via the in-app tutorial, participants were introduced to the formal observation process. That is, not just point and click. 
This easy to follow tutorial was well received by all participants. They noted that it not only gave instructions on how and what to photograph, but also provided explanation as to why. They were introduced to the idea of capturing basic environmental data and to classify what they were observing in a structured way, down to being able to provide an estimate of the ground cover visible. The winning team consisted of three youth members, aged 10, 11, the captain, and 15 years, who made a total of 111 observations across five states and territories, travelling a, a total of at least 4,600 kilometres, or 2,800 miles. The parents noted that through the process, their respective youth uh, had become more focused on STEM and generally more observant of the passing terrain. They apparently began noting the, the changes in the passing terrain and wanting to make observations based on documenting the differing environments. Here is the winning team, the th three youth members, not the older folk. In participating in the competition, the three also achieved extremely well in the international component of a parallel NASA Globe Observer competition, coming second in Asia Oceania region. Their efforts have also been acknowledged in a number of NASA publications and papers where they are listed as contributors, you know, contributing authors for their efforts. From the pure science perspective, the results of the competition provided a valuable data set across most states and territories, including some quite remote observations where few land-based images are available. As a side note, the importance of the data captured was emphasised to the scouts by the, the other gala dinner guests from various countries going out of their way to congratulate the team on the night. Imagine, if you will, that you are a teenager or younger and you have uh, heavyweights from places you have only dreamed about coming up and congratulating you and telling you about the value of the data you collected. Think it would have made an impact? It certainly did. A competition needs a prize. As part of the prize for first place, the team was flown to Canberra and presented with their award, along with the international awardees at the gala dinner. They then spent some days touring the GeoWeek displays and attending some of the science collections and institutions in, the Canberra, uh, in Canberra, including Geoscience Australia, National Insect Collection, National Herbarium and Questacon, Australia's interactive science centre based on the Exploratorium in San Francisco. After they returned home, they were also able to access a number of scientists from NASA, Geoscience Australia and CSIRO for virtual discussions um, with their scout group about the scientists' experience and their reasons for taking up their, their career. This access to the scientists was also extended to first to second and third places. The impact or reach of citizen science can be greater than the actual science and the individuals contributing. In the case of the scout-based competition, the youth members provided presentations to their scout groups and schools. I understand they also featured in a local newspaper article and less formally talked to their friends with some excitement about what they'd done and its tie with science. In a more structured sense within the design of the competition, there were a additional community engagement built in. This included advertising the competition and the association with known science agencies and the purpose that the data would be put to. And also prizes included scientists uh, from the likes of NASA and CSIRO, Geoscience Australia, being able to talk to their, talk about their experiences and why they chose to take up a, a science career, not just to the winners of the, you know, winners, but their, their scout group as well. Studies indicate that involvement in, of the community in citizen science increases the science capital of the community and has a cumulative effect leading to greater willingness to be involved in the sciences. This increase in science capital is also shown to increase 
the take-up of science-related learning and careers. Scouse Australia, through its state and territory based branches, has established additional and ongoing citizen science and STEM based activities. Please note the hard hats and masks from a recent Water Watch um, citizen science activity. The area the group was working in had been subject to bushfires earlier in the year and there was a risk of fire affected trees dropping limbs. Sci Scout in the ACT um, it has was established in 2015 with an astronomy night. They knew they were onto a, a winner when the, yeah, when the first night they planned for 300 people, 1200 booked and 2000 participants showed up on the night. Over the last five years, Sci Scouts has delivered astronomy, chemistry, environment, engineering, health and fitness themed programs in collaboration with a range of partners including universities and professional bodies and with the support of a number of grants. The program within Scouts is intended to be fun and informative and deepen STEM engagement for young Australians. Geoscience Australia in its various guises has been the beneficiary of citizen science for over 100 years. This has included rocks and fossil samples collect, collected by Sir Douglas Mawson during his Antarctic expeditions 1911-1914 through to more modern times. This uh, has also included the transcription of scientific co collections and journals through the Digivol platform, which participants, mostly older folk, have informed me has added to their scientific knowledge and geography. We have also tried to move with the times and are grateful to the 42,000 plus people who made use of the Earthquakes at GA tool to make a felt report. The longer term investment, sometimes years, pays off in both tangible and non-tangible benefits. The use of citizen science allows the augmentation of the base science via things like greater numbers of samples and or more geographic spread for a relatively small resource investment. Please note, I'm not saying no investment. It raises awareness. The increased awareness um, and exposure of the sciences has been shown to increase the take up of STEM and STEM related careers. Scientific literacy. An increase here means a community is better able to absorb and make sense of scientific information. Community engagement. The development of an aware, involved and enthusiastic citizen science community provides an additional means of promulgating the results of the science through an invested group. Thank you.